This week on Trial Talk, as promised, I'm going to show you guys how to remove a radiator off the wall dead easy without causing a leak, a flood, ruining the laminate floor. Now, before I lose you completely and you go on to the next video, I understand we're not plumbers. Um, I'm not a heating engineer. I don't get involved with boilers or anything like that. But um, I do know how to remove radiators. And the reason I'm sharing that with you is because we all know as domestic spreads that radiators are better removed off the wall so we can skim behind. Why? In case they change the size of the radiator, um, they might move the position of the radiator in the future. And you don't, they don't want to be left with a nasty ridge where part of the wall hasn't been skimmed. So always best, I think we all agree, always best to remove the radiator um, so that we can skim behind. Now, I understand that most of you will be busy and you haven't got this issue. You, you tell them to remove it and you leave it to them. But I think in an economy that's a little bit iffy, um, which this year might be for many of us, having that little USP, unique selling proposition, that little edge where we can say, look, don't worry about that. I'll remove the radiator. Um, you can also charge for it as well. So I'll charge 45 quid for removing the radiator. And if I go back to rehang it, that will be another 45 quid. So there's potential little learner there as well. It's not, it's not big money. But on top of that, just think about this. On top of that, how many times have you skimmed out a room and thought, I'd love to get some after pictures once it's painted for my website, for my socials from my facebook page from my instagram page i'd love to be able to say this was the room before we plastered it all the walls are cracked and ropey or you know blown and now this is the room skimmed decorated finished carpeted done before and after right through now the reason i started offering to put them back is because i thought to myself if i go back that room's going to be completely decorated and finished. Once I've put the radiator back, it'll take me five minutes. I can then pull my phone out and get some content, get some photos of the finished room. So it sort of um, gives us an opportunity, an excuse to return to that job where normally we, we would never see the room finished normally. It gives us an opportunity to return to that job, touch base with the customer, um, talk about maybe some new products that you, you're offering, um ask them you know do they plan on having any more rooms renovated and can you help out with anything else it gives you an opportunity to open up a dialogue um make them happy putting the radiator back so you get the five star review the glowing review and then you can also get some photos of the uh, finished article so that's another reason why um i do it so before we get stuck into the actual nitty gritty of me showing you how i remove the rads without causing a leak there's a couple of things I want to um, just talk about. What tools are you going to need? And how do you isolate the radiator? So first things first, okay, when you go in to remove this radiator, guys, you need to first isolate it. Now, you do that by turning the TRV clockwise. So you'll have uh, your, your thermostat on the right-hand side. Turn that completely off by turning that clockwise. And the other side, um, normally you'll have a little plastic cap. And under that cap is a little nib. So you remove that cap, get some pliers, and you'll turn that nib clockwise. So just like turning the taps off, basically. And what that will do, guys, it will stop water flowing into that radiator. Now, you've still obviously got water within the radiator. It's still full. And in this video, I'll show you how we deal with um, that and stop it from splurging out all over the floor. But that's the first thing you need to do. Isolate the radiator. Um, you'll need a decent set of grips and a decent adjustable spanner in order to do this, and maybe a set of pliers as well. So there's my little tip to get going. Now, before we get stuck into this video, I just want to say, if you haven't subscribed, guys, and you're finding this video helpful, if it's helped you to remove radiators, then please consider subscribing to the channel and also join our thriving Facebook group, Trial Talk, if you haven't already done so. Let's get stuck in. Right then guys, in this video today, I'm going to show you how we move radiators. Dead easy, dead simple. I know a lot of you plasterers, you don't want to take these off because they're a bit of a pain in the backside. Uh, but I'm going to show you a really easy way of how we do it. So, get yourself some rubble bags, right? And what we're going to do, we're just going to make um, a little boots, basically. So, 
You open your rubble bag up, just roll the top down like that. If you place that underneath the pipe work each side, that's so when you crack these nuts, any drips, any water leaks, they're just going to go into that bag, so you're not going to get any water on them. Let's say this was a laminate floor or a nice carpet, saves any water spillages. So we'll do that first. Take some mould grips, crack the nuts, okay, loosen them off. Guys, it's important to mention here that before you attempt to disconnect the radiator, make sure you've got a firm grip of this elbow using your mould grips as shown here in the image. Then we can take our adjustable spanner and loosen off that fitting. If we don't steady that elbow, guys, and have a firm hold of it, and we just try and loosen off that fitting, um, we could risk bending that pipe and potentially the elbow could pop off the pipe, causing no end of dramas. So make sure you've got a firm grip of the elbow using your mole grips here. But then, if you come in, Mark, so what we'll do, guys, we'll loosen these off. Like so, but then just slip a little credit card in. And that'll just slow the water pressure down. We'll do the same this side, Mark. Slip a little card in. And what that does, it does two things that does, guys. It stops the thread from catching onto that nut. So sometimes when you go to lift the radiator off, um, it will catch back onto the thread and then you sort of fighting with it. So that little credit card trick there just means when we lift that off now, it comes off clean. All right, guys, final tip on radiator removal. Depending on the size of this rad that you're planning to remove, you might need to get your labourer or somebody to give you a, a lift off the wall so that you can empty this radiator out. Now, if it's a small radiator, you can normally do this yourself. So have an empty plastering bucket ready, um, have a bit of tarpaulin or some plastic sheeting down on the floor ready, um, and just choose which end that you're gonna tip and just empty it out into your plastering tub. What I then normally do is flip the radiator upside down so that the pipes are at the top, no risk of any um, you know, black, horrible black dirty water leaking out anywhere. So flip it upside down and then you can just leave it out the way ready to crack on with your plastering. Guys, I hope this video has helped you out today. If you do have any questions in regards to removing rads, I'll be happy to answer them. So drop a comment in below. I'll always answer your questions. Have a good one. We'll see you next time.